welcome in this video lecture i am going to talk about how we can solve the dynamic lot sizing problem using excel solver so first of all in order to solve this problem with the excel solver we are going to formulate this dynamic lot sizing problem into a mathematical model so as we know that uh, graphically we can represent this dynamic lot sizing over the finite planning horizon that if we have let's say four month planning horizon this is for t is equal to one this is for time period two time period three and time period four so in every particular time period we have a demand so this is time uh, demand against time period one two three and four so the dynamic lot sizing problem says that we have to meet this demand uh, based on the available inventory in that time period plus the quantity we have produced in that time period or if i am talking about in terms of the supply chain the quantity we should order in that time period okay and then at the end uh, we may have uh, the inventory at the end of that period so against that we have to bear the holding cost and if we are saying that uh, in terms of the supply chain if we are ordering it so we have to bear the order cost right so uh, so in order to uh, convert this dynamic lot sizing or formulate this dynamic lot sizing into a mathematical model so how we can do that so first of all we have a finite planning horizon so that means we have the discrete time period so we are representing the time period with t so the small t is basically representing the uh, time period one two up to capital t where t is based capital t is representing the highest uh, planning horizon time period we are considering whether we are considering four time period planning horizon or a five month or a six month okay and then against every particular time period we have the demand against every time period we have the unit production cost if we are producing that particular product in that time period right so you can uh, take it as uh, uh, constant or you can say that there is no need to consider this particular cost if uh, it is the constant throughout the time but uh, in the optimization or the mathematical modeling uh, this cost can be considered if it is varying from time to time then it is important if it is not varying from time to time the unit production cost then there is no need to consider this one into your math model okay then uh, we are talking about in terms of manufacturing perspective so then there is a setup cost or if we talk about in terms of the supply chain perspective so whenever we are going to place the order in a particular time period so there is an order cost so you can say set up or the order cost in that time period okay so h t is basically representing the holding cost per unit per time period okay so when we have holding the inventory from one time period to another time period okay so or you can say at the end of that particular time period we have the leftover unit or you can say the leftover means right now i'm saying the in uh, we have having the inventory in uh, at the end of the time period okay so uh, the next uh, we have these things we should know so that's why we call it as uh, parameters and data and t is basically representing in this model is going to be the index right and we have the three decision variables so one is we need to know how much quantity we should order or you can say in a, a manufacturing environment how much quantity we should produce in that particular time period plus how much inventory we should keep at the end of that time period and then whether we are going to produce that particular product in that time period or not or if i am talking about in terms of the supply chain angle whether i am going to order that uh, order the quantity in that time period or not so this is a binary decision variable so which means if i am going to uh, place the order so against that we have a order cost or you can say the setup cost okay then we have the inventory holding cost right and right now how much quantity we are producing so this is basically indicating the uh, production cost or you can say that if we are purchasing it so this is a purchase cost okay uh, uh, against that quantity 
in terms of the supply chain angle but in terms of manufacturing this is a uh, production cost right so the math model is we want to minimize the total cost over the entire planning horizon so that's why we are summing from t1 to capital t so this is the production cost uh, because tt is representing the unit production cost multiply by the decision variable how much quantity we should order or the produce in that particular time period we have a setup cost or order cost we have the holding cost okay and subject to the constraints we have that we have to meet the demand of every time period in a dynamic Lot sizing. So that's why we have a, uh, you can say, uh, demand constraint or the inventory balancing constraint. So, how we can meet the demand of uh, any particular time period uh, that is going to be based on the inventory we have at the end of the last time period, or you can say at the start of the time period T, plus the quantity we are ordering or the quantity we have produced in the period of T must be equal to demand okay so when we are using equal so that means it might be possible we have more than this so that's why we are saying that uh, the inventory we should keep so that's why we are uh, using this one so you can also write this constraint this way like ig minus one that the inventory we have at the start of uh, the time period t okay or you can say at the end of the time period t minus one plus the quantity we should produce must be greater than or equal to D. So the greater than or equal to D means so DT minus uh, IT minus one uh, minus QT. So this is basically representing the, uh, this is basically equal to IT, the inventory we have at the end of uh, the time period T. So in simply, we can simply, uh, in order to write it is equal uh, into equal to, we can, simply add IIT for all time periods. So this is the inventory balancing constraint. So this is the additional constraint. We are saying that the initial inventory must be equal to zero if we have, okay, like if we do not have that SKU or the stock keeping unit or the product uh, zero inventory. So that means we are considering the initial inventory is zero. So I capital T that means at the end of the planning horizon. So there should be no quantity in the inventory of that product. Okay. So if we uh, are going to make this constraint and uh, the next constraint we have that mean. Uh, so our YT is a binary variable. So this is basically a on off constraint. You can say that. So whenever we are going to place the order. So this is going to be one. So this constraint is going to be active. Okay, so the how much quantity we can order so we can order as much as equal to the capital DT where capital DT is you can say the large number or you can say the demand equal to the sum of entire planning horizons demand. Okay. So either you can use MT over here, which is a big number or either you can use capital DT, which I am taking it uh, the entire planning horizons demand sum. Okay. So this is going to be say that if we are going to produce the quantity or you can say we are going to order the quantity based on if y is equal to one in that time period. So we can produce uh, in that time period as much as equal to the total demand of the uh, entire planning horizon. So which means we are not considering right now the capacity restriction. Okay. Uh, so that means uh, this problem right now we are solving is uncapacity lot sizing problem. Okay. Or you can say uncapacity dynamic lot sizing problem. Another thing right now we uh, we are considering that uh, a single product. So that was uh, that's why we can say it single product or single item dynamic uncapacity lot sizing problem. So at the end we have uh, the three decision variables where QT and IIT we are considering as a non-negative continuous variable where Y is a binary variable. So that's why uh, because we have the mix of the variable. So that's why we call it as mixed integer linear programming model. Now the question is how we can solve this problem with the help of Excel solver. So for that, uh, basically I am uh, considering this particular example. Uh, that is this one where we are saying that uh, the order cost or you can say the setup cost for the time period or the order cost 
uh, per time period is $80. The unit holding cost is $1.75. So it is, uh, they didn't give us the production cost per unit. So that's where there is no need to consider uh, that cost in the model. So we only have the order cost and the holding cost. And this is the um, monthly demand they have given us. Or you can see the forecast demand for the next six months. So how we can solve this one using the Excel solver. Uh, so first of all, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, input the data. So this is basically the input data we have. Uh, so what I have done because this is the demand of the corn floor. So corn floor uh, is the product which we have the data set for from the month January to June. So this is the demand in kgs. Uh, which is given according to this particular question. Okay, uh, further we have given the order cost. So whenever I'm going to place the order in a particular month, so I have to bear the $80. Similarly, in every time period uh, per unit, the holding cost is 1.75. So that's why I have repeated that one as well. Okay, uh, and then uh, right now, because in this particular problem, they didn't mention the initial uh, inventory. So that's why I'm assuming the initial inventory is going to be zero. So after input the data, the next thing we are doing is basically uh, I am summing it all the uh, planning, all the demands uh, in the entire planning horizon. So that is basically 306 in order to basically um, uh, using this capital D. Okay, that is the sub demand. Okay, uh, the next thing after inputting the data is that we are going to define the decision variables, so which mean we would like that the Excel should uh, show the variables answer in these cells. So this is going to be um, the inventory in the time period one. So that be basically means the inventory at the end of period one, the inventory at the end of period two up to the inventory at the end of period six. So similarly, we have the setup or you can see the order variable, then we have the quantity variable uh, in that particular time period. Okay, uh, the next thing is after defining that we would like the decision variables values over here, we need to mention the constraint. The first constraint is going to be equal to uh, the initial inventory. So that means the inventory we have at the start of January, which is zero, okay, plus the quantity we are producing in this particular time period minus the demand, okay? That is going to be uh, minus 36. So basically we are going to apply this constraint, okay? So second, uh, we are mentioning that equal the inventory we have in this particular time period, that means at the end of January, which is B18, okay? Plus, uh, we are seeing how much quantity we are going to produce in this particular time period minus the demand, okay? So after applying this particular formula, so we can simply drag it because for the month of March, we are saying that the inventory we have had uh, in this particular time period, okay? Uh, that is, uh, uh, which is basically, let me, yes. So the inventory we have in this particular time period plus the quantity we are producing uh, in this particular time period, which is the March minus the demand March demand and so on. Okay. And lastly, we are going to apply that uh, this particular variable, whether if we are going to place the order or not, which is basically the YT multiply by this H4 and this is must be a fixed variable okay so after applying this particular formula so what we are going to do is we are going to drag and uh, apply on the cells okay so this is the constraint right we have applied which we are going to use in the solver the last thing we are going to need to we need to calculate the order cost so how you can do that we can simply uh, say that the sum product basically we are applying equal sum product formula and we are saying the order cost okay uh, must be multiplied by with this one with this time period whether if it is zero or it is one 
So it will calculate if we are going to place the order in that particular time period, there will be one and one is going to be multiplied with 80. Okay, if we are not going to place the order, you can say we are not set up as the production, then there will be no order of the setup cost. Okay, and the, there is a two way to calculate the uh, carrying cost. One is we are saying that equal sum product carrying cost per unit multiplied by the inventory we have at the end of the time period. The next, uh, the second way you can calculate the carrying cost is uh, that is basically carrying cost, which is 1.75 for every month multiplied by the average inventory we have in any particular time period. So that is basically we are summing this one and divided by two, okay? Uh, so basically the total cost is going to be if I am using the inventory at the end of period that is the sum of this cell plus sum of this cell is the total cost. So if I am using the average carrying inventory that is this one so which means this plus this the sum of this one is going to be basically our uh, total cost. So that is basically this one okay. Then there is no need to use this one right. So uh, at the end, we are going to calculate the minimum total inventory after solving it with the solver. So let's solve this one. So the first one is we would like to minimize the total cost. That is basically this one, okay? This cell and this is the minimization by changing mean the decision variables we have. So we have these decision variables, okay? Uh, and then we have a constraint which is basically the first one that is called as basically the inventory balancing constraint. So we are saying the inventory in this particular time period must be equal to the inventory constraint we have applied that is over there, over here, right? Uh, second, uh, we are going to apply that is our decision variable. So that is basically our set of variables must be the binary okay must be equal to the binary right so this is the second constraint we have applied then the third constraint is basically the quantity we produce in any particular uh, time period okay must be less than or equal to uh, must be less than or equal to less than or equal to from this one okay that is the constraint we have applied over there and uh, lastly we have the initial inventory we are saying that equal to zero okay so that is basically this cell basically whatever the value is equal to zero so that is up to you whether you would like to apply or not okay so then we are saying that all the decision variable must be non-negative if it is continuous with solving with lp so if i click solve okay and uh, press you can click on the answer press ok so you will get the answer so right now it is saying that uh, in the month of january so there will be no inventory at the end of january no inventory at the end of february so we have the 11 uh, skus at the end of march and so on so we are going to place the order in january february march there is no order we are going to place in april then at the start of may we are going to place the order and how much we are going to place the order or how much we are going to produce so the total cost if would be 419.25 if we are considering the inventory at the end of the time period so the total cost would be 687 if we are considering the average inventory in order to calculate the carrying cost per unit. So I hope you got the idea how you can solve this uh, dynamic lot sizing problem using Excel solver. So thank you so much. See you in the next video.